the theme I have for this message, seeing the unseen war. Yeah. Seeing the unseen war. There is a war that is going on right. now, right. even against Emmanuel Baptist Church. Yeah. Amen. There is a war. Yeah. And there are demonic spirits fighting against the church of Jesus Christ. Right. And as I tell you, believers of grace, if we do not fight, Satan is going to fight us. We have to fight, not the physical war, but the power to pray. Live clean, live holy, live right, read the word of God, praise the Lord, and you pray. God is going to give victory. We are fighting a war. And let us not think it. I'm going to church, I'm going to praise God, hallelujah, bless God, and everything is okay. Yes, this is good. But remember in our minds, we are fighting a spiritual warfare. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6, right. verse 12. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, right. but against principalities, yeah. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. This is what we fight. And brethren, I preach on spiritual warfare as often as the Lord leads me. And that's why Satan attacks me to destroy me. The demons don't want me to preach that. But they can't stop me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus Christ. His master, his sovereign, his God, his glorious Lord, and his power has no end. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus Christ. Second Kings chapter 6, we're going to read from verse 15. Speaking of the servant of Elisha, after Gehazi got that disease of leprosy because deception and lies, <coughs> and he had to be set apart to go and die. There was a curse. <clears throat> Verse 15 says, And when a servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compared the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? He was perplexed. Well, he said, Master, well, we can't do nothing again. We can't do nothing. So he gave up. What shall we do? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. The Lord bless his holy word as we read. Amen. The servant of the Lord. And I can imagine the young man being maybe called or grafted in by Elisha to help him in the ministry. Because Gehazi was no more. And the young man, <clears throat> I believe, not much experience of knowing the things of God. <clears throat> Wake up early morning. Maybe go outside in the post to stretch. <clears throat> You know, some people like to stretch when they get up. Yeah. And when he goes outside to watch around, when he saw the armies of Syria, yeah. horsemen, all on spears and bows and arrows, and he was afraid. Right. Master, master, what shall we do? He was turned. His physical eyes saw the physical fighting force of Syria. Right. And as a circle Dothan, because how will this happen? It is because the king of Syria wanted to capture the king of Israel. Right. And Elisha told the king of Israel, in such and such a place, the king of Syria, seek your life. Do not pass day. And uh, this was told to the king three times for him to learn. And he did not pass there. And so the, the, the king of Syria called his generals and his captain and lieutenants, tell me who's against me. Who tell the king that I'm looking for him? He's not passing there. Who tell the king? And one general said, Your Honor, we are with you. We are for you. The man, Elisha, the prophets, 
had told the king, what? Now I got to capture that man. He said, go and find out where he is. And I believe some of the soldiers went and uh, not to be identified. Maybe in old clothes or tied a hair, whatever. Disguise. Go into the small city of Dothan. Find out where Elisha was. And they brought back news to the king. Elisha is in Dothan. Right to have him. And so he gathered his armies. And they went around and they compassed the city of Dothan by night. And as the armies crawl around the city with their horses, their spears and the swords, they want Elisha. And so the young man now wake up that morning not knowing what went on. He went out. When he saw that, he was afraid. And he said, Master, what shall we do? In amazement, he was afraid. When you know God, you will not be afraid. Amen. Elisha knew the Lord, Jehovah. Right. And he was not afraid. Right. And Elisha answered, Say, young man, fear not. Yeah. Fear not. He said, For they that be with us are more than they that are with them. Amen. The young man could not understand that. You see, there's something that blocks the hearts and the mind of man. That it only takes God to open the heart right. and the mind of man. Right. I remember Lydia. When the Apostle Paul went uh, off in some resorts in the area to pray. And he went and he preached the word of God. And Lydia, her heart was open. Right. She was in church. Right. She was worshiping God. Right. But her heart was closed. Right. In Christian churches, there are a lot of people going to church and their heart closed. Right. Right. God has to own their heart with his word. Right. Only God can open the heart of a sinful soul. And as a heart was open, even the disciples, when Jesus Christ was, uh, died and risen, going to the road of Emmaus, and uh, Christ joined in and coming with them, and they didn't know it was him. And when he spoke to them of the things that he was saying, because they were talking about the things that Jesus did, he said, didn't, didn't our hearts burn when he was with us after he left? God as he opened their hearts, Christ vanished. Their hearts and their mind was open. They understand then it was Jesus Christ. So that young man's eyes, spiritual eyes was closed. His literal physical eyes was open. He saw the literal army of Syria, but he did not see on the mountains the servant of God. And as Elijah said, fear not. Do not be afraid, young man. Do not be afraid. And this is what Jesus Christ is saying to people today. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Amen. Yea, I will uphold you with the righteousness of my righteousness. Amen. God is concerned about his people in every circumstances and situation. He will never leave us, neither forsake us. Amen. This is a God in whom I believe and I trust. Yeah. He's sovereign. <laughs> So he answered, fear not, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And I can imagine, as Elisha told him that, he may be most stunned in his mind. How you mean? How you mean that they are with us, two of us alone? And he did not understand. Spiritually, he was dull. Right. He did not know the, the God of Israel. Yeah. Elisha knew him. And as a minister to Elisha, Elisha had that relationship with Almighty God. Amen. And Elisha could have said in verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, I pray thee, O Lord, he said, Lord, I pray thee, open the eyes, open his eyes, that he might see. Amen. Simple. Open his eyes, that he might see. And the young man, <clears throat> and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. 
God opened his spiritual eyes. And he saw on the mountain. Try us a fire among the Elisha. God is there fighting for us. Amen. When the authorities of the state of America take a stand of fundamentalism against the Baptist, God is fighting for us. When leaders in the Caribbean come against the Christians, God is fighting for us. Amen. There is a battle unseen. There is no sword or, or club or gun or bombs or sword being demonstrated. But there, demonic powers are all there. But the angels of the Lord encamp at the wrong them that fear him and to deliver him. We thank God for such a fighting force. Yeah. These spirits, this heavenly horse, encamp over and around every believer. Thank God for his protection. Yeah. And let me say this, brethren. If God did not protect us, we would have been destroyed by the powers of darkness. Yeah, right. Especially pastors and evangelists sure. who are leading in front. Yeah. Pastors have been attacked in the crusade, and not crusade, but the conference in Bessemer City. I've been coming up here for nine years to conferences. <clears throat> that the first time I heard pastors speak so much of spiritual warfare against believers in America. I knew it was happening in Grenada. I knew it was happening in America. But first time I heard pastors elaborate on the warfare of the forces of darkness against the believers. <coughs> in Dothan, the Syrian army, behind the Syrian army were the powers of darkness. To capture the man of God, to stifle the man of God from doing the work of God. Today, demons are behind pastors, evangelists, missionaries, even the fellow brothers and sisters to stop doing God's work. These demonic spirits work to make believers lazy. Around the TV, around the internet hours, enjoying life to the fullest and not knowing behind them. Behind the dark areas of life are the demonic spirits getting the mind, getting the thoughts of believers to subdue to their bidding so that they will not do the work of God. We have a war on our hands. But thank God there is a fighting force with us. There is a fighting force. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's the confidence we have in Jesus Christ. He's our master, our savior, and he's concerned about us in every situation of our life. As we serve him, he will not shun us or deny us. As we serve him, he's going to stand by us at all times. In every circumstances and situation, as long as we are faithful to him, God will protect us. <coughs> the unseen battle that has demonic forces come up against the church of God, come up against the pastors. We thank God that there are hosts of heavenly beings standing by to defend the angel of the Lord and camp it around. It is said, on the side a wrong total protection from a hedge of defense among the people of God God is almighty and he's going to protect his people at all costs thank God for his defense his mighty amazing grace that God has shown towards us that he Joy in our lives when we bring him glory. Yes. 
in America. I know many people have their guns to defend the house, to defend the children, but especially the wives. The wives of the husband is dear to the husband. The children is dear. The house is dear. You have to go protect all of them. <coughs> but the wife of that man who value her husband, he stands to defend her at all costs. Right. And so many will have the gun to defend their wives if he takes the gun to defend it. Many are going to fight to defend their wives because she's a part of the man. Right. Right. That flesh of his flesh, yeah, yeah. bone of his bones. Yeah. So he's going to defend his wife at all costs. Right. How much more? Jesus Christ is going to defend us. We are part of the bride of Christ. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. And so we are his. He's going to defend us at our cost. And we have to have confidence that our God will protect us at all times. So amidst the fighting rage of the forces of darkness, we have the Servants of the law that quells, that destroys the forces of evil and defends the people of God. What a God who cares about us that we do not see in a spiritual way. But God who is there at all times. Let's look at it. At all times God is there. God don't go and take a sleep when we sleep and we wake up in the morning. God is there. God don't sleep. Right. He watches over us. He protects us. We are his own. Amen. He values us because we are bought with a price. Amen. He's worthy yeah. to be glorified. Yeah. Yeah. And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. And that's why sometimes in Grenada, I'm going to walk in the woods and praise God. I'm going to go around my house and I'm going to praise God. And people say, well, but I'm best man. I'm mad for Jesus. Amen. I normally am a quiet person. But I'm intrigued when I read the word of God. And when God blesses my life from his word, I'm not quiet. No. Because God means much to me. Amen. I've seen the value of God in my life. So I just cannot be silent when I got to praise God. People praise the devil with joy. Sure. I want to praise Jesus Christ with a greater joy. Amen. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. He has done great things for us. We are free and glad. <laughs> so, Elisha prayed. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Behold, a mountain was full of horses. Yeah. Amazing. Not the uh, horses of the Syrians. Right. Horses of heaven. Amen. And chariots of heaven, chariots of fire, round about a man of God. When the man of God are going through some difficult times, when the devil is planning evil against the man of God, God is there to protect his servants at all times. What a God we serve. He's wonderful. I can't explain, but I can say, Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Praise his holy name. Amen. God is wonderful. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Bible says, <clears throat> verse 18, and then when he came down, Elijah prayed. The Lord said, smile the people. Now, there's a situation again. <laughs> the power of prayer. Hey, the power of prayer. It cannot be denied. Right. Amen. As Elijah, after this situation happened, he showed the young man. God showed the young man. Chariots of fire and horses around Elisha. Elisha prayed. Lord, make these seen men blind. The power of prayer. There were demons around. But no demon could stop the power of prayer. Yeah. And after, he made them blind. <coughs> Excuse me. He walked. <coughs> Elisha led them in the streets of Samaria <coughs> to the king of Israel. 
He said, follow me. I don't know if they threw down the spears and the, and the, the um, swords, or they had them, or they held them, I don't know. But they were physically blind. And I believe their hand was upon each other. And they were following Elijah in the hot sun, going down to the king of Samaria. It is the power of God. Making seen men blind. Making a man that is blind to see spiritual things. <clears throat> and as he led them, the goodness of God, in the end, Elisha said, give them bread and water and send them home. And when he did that, <clears throat> for a long time, Syria did not try to invade Israel. There was forgiveness being shown. But then, <clears throat> another, <clears throat> excuse me, another situation that arises in Job, Job chapter 1 verse 8 to 10, when God said to, to Satan, Dost thou consider my servant Job, a man that and show evil? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. And then Satan tell him, uh, he's serving you because you're defending him. And God showed him that he's not serving me because I'm giving him all these things that he has. But his heart is right with me. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and God told him, you could go ahead and Affect him. God gave him the, 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 the leeway. And Satan went out. And there were. It's a war that Job didn't recognize. Satan was attacking his family. Satan was attacking his health and his life. Even his wife could have said. Cause God and die. It was war. Unseen war. That Job might not have fully recognized. That Satan was working to destroy Job. He destroyed his children, his animals, and so forth. And he was left alone, he and his wife. The wife said, Cause God and die. How would it be, sisters? Something happened to your husband. He lost his job. The car got wrecked. Things happened in the home, and it seems everything gone. What would you say? I don't want you again. Get away from my life. I'm going to leave and go. No. You stand with your husband. Amen. Stand up. Stand up. Yeah. As a soldier of the cross. Yeah. And love your husband. Yeah. And stand with him. God will protect and sustain him. Yeah. In situations that will come your way. God is great. And God is powerful. That even though your husband may fall. Because you never know. The demon may be walking to undermine your husband. And he takes you to stand with your husband and pray. Claiming authority over the powers of darkness. And so I won't go into the other passages I want to say. <clears throat> but I just want to lay upon our hearts even tonight. We are fighting an unseen war. And it is a war that Satan desires to win. His winning is to destroy us. So that we're going to bring shame and disgrace in our community, in our church, yeah. and to the Lord. But as we stand up for Jesus Christ, yeah. the angels of the Lord encamped around us to defend us. In that unseen, in that unseen war, through prayer, we can break down strongholds yeah. and stand with the man of God. And we take a stand. For Jesus Christ in Emmanuel Baptist Church. Give him your every support that he needs. So that he can see the work of God prosper. Satan don't like it. No. People are going to try to see if they could merge. With different Bibles or different doctrines. With Emmanuel Baptist Church. Stand up on the word of God. Stand up on the principles of Jesus Christ. Never give up. Never surrender. Anytime you surrender, you lose. You are defeated. Right. We are not a defeated foe. Right. No. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Amen. And so we have so much scriptures in the word of God that enhance our desire to serve God. Yeah. Yeah. I just stand with the man of God. God will prosper you. Yeah. If you oppose him, God will bless you. Yeah. I see in Grenada, 
men who oppose the stand against men of God. And God will prosper them. There's a young uh, man who opposed me because he tried to see if he get rid of me in a church. He, his aim was to uh, set up a, 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 do a strategy. Put the, the guy who was there with the guitar to put him as youth pastor. He had a meeting with me. And uh, the other young man wanted to put him as youth leader. So he could have stirred up the believers, tried to stir up the believers against me to get me off. Yeah, that's what's going on in grace. But he opposed the prayer life of the believers. The other guy wanted to pray his way. And the other one, to be youth leader, he pretended he prayed, but after two minutes he stopped praying. And God has worked in grace because of the power of prayer. And there are some men who stand with a pastor for righteousness who pray. Yeah. And God got rid of them. Yeah. Right. It was a demonic spirit. And I told that man, I said, you were sent here by the devil yeah. to destroy this church. Yeah. But you wouldn't make it. Right. And he opposed prayer. When we will pray, the church will go and pray. He'll go outside in the, in the little porch. I don't know if he's going to pray silently or what. I don't know. But he wanted to stop praying in the church. This was the devil. And so the devil come in means and ways right. to affect the church. Spiritual warfare. Right. And so I encourage you to stand with the man of God. With him in the work of God. To glorify God. Amen. When you stand with the man of God. God will prosper your life. Right. He's going to prosper the church. And God will get the glory in the end. Amen. Thank God. He is with us. Amen. May God bless you and encourage you to stand up yeah. in the spiritual war. Be counted and drafted in yeah. in serving Jesus Christ. Yeah. Take a stand home. Pray for your children. Yeah. Anoint your children. Get the anointing all. Pray for it. Anoint your children. Pray over them. Claim them for Jesus. Because the devil fighting for our children. Fighting for uh, our realities, fighting for other people. We got to take that authority in the name of Jesus Christ and claim them for Jesus Christ. Thank you. It's a privilege being here. May God bless you. Remember, we fight an unseen one that we do not see spiritually, but they are there. May God give us grace to stand up and be the soldiers of the cross. Live high the royal banner. It must not suffer loss. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor.